Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer. We're taking a look at the second of three New York Red Stakes races at the Spa on Friday. Race number six kicks off the 50 cent late pick five. It's the $125,000 Union Avenue handicap. We're going three quarters of a mile for the Phillies and Mares. Let's take a look at this field. I think this is a pretty intriguing group, Mike. Morning Line favorites the two Secret Love, and Secret Love was in against a pretty strong group of open second-level allowance horses earlier this Saratoga meet. She's got some races, especially over wet tracks, that make her very tough. Uh, yeah, she does like a wet track. I personally feel like she's probably as good over faster, you know, even though three of her four wins have been on wet tracks. I think she's fine over faster. She's not a star, obviously, Dan, but, um, you know, she's pretty good on her best day. I like her running style for this race. You know, I don't, not sure how short a price I'd want to take on her, but this is a great spot for her. What I like about her is she's pace adaptable. And we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. We see a horse like Chase and Cara, who is fast, but is going to be a bigger price in here on the lead. Grudge can be close. She's going to be a bigger price. Mashney Girl is turning back in distance. We'll see if her speed is as sharp going six furlongs. I think that the two secret love can kind of be placed wherever John Velasquez wants, no matter what time form U.S. says on the projector. I agree with that. Um, I do think she can fall into a trip here, especially because it does feel like even though there's not a ton of speed in here, it feels like there's at least some chance this pace gets uh, gets somewhat contested anyway, Dan. Uh, the three has speed, uh, Mashney girl. I, I won't be surprised if she goes for it, even though she's cutting back in this race. I won't be surprised if they're trying to make the lead with her. Chasing care of the seven who Pace Projector has on the lead, is certainly going to show speed in here. And even Grudge, who hasn't gotten off to good starts in either of her last two races, when she breaks the gate, she's pretty fast. Snick at the number one went through her state bred conditions over the winter at Acura. I caught a wet, uh, wet track at Belmont uh, against Open Company. Two starts back. Didn't really run very well that day at a short price. Last time out in the Dancer Renee, she caught Bankston, who's one of the better uh, New York bred Philly and Mare sprinters. And she just didn't fire that day. She was on the outside. I think she needs to take a step forward. Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, stepped her up finally to a stakes race last time. She was almost 50 to 1. Um, and, you know, for a reason, Dan, she hasn't really run a fast race yet. Overall, she didn't run poorly in the Dancing Renee at all. I mean, she got the kind of trip that you expected her to get in there. She wasn't that far away when they came into the stretch. And if she had fired a good shot, maybe she could have got a piece of it, Dan. But that, that race was just too tough for her. And I feel like this race might be a little too tough for her as well. Secret love, the two, John Velasquez, John Kimmel. This is a horse that was fifth in that tough second level allowance at Saratoga earlier this meet in against Banksting. Two starts back and just found the mile, I think, a little bit too far. Three back in that critical eye where she was close to the pace. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I don't think she really wants to go that far. Her prior two races, the two dirt sprints surrounding the turf start. I mean, she ran really well in winning both of those. And um, she just feels like a really nice fit in this race. Her Dancy Renee was fine against a horse like Banks thing was too good for her. That was a wicked tough spot for her last time. She's just a really nice fit in here. Again, I don't you know, think I would take too short a price on her, but in some ways she's the horse to beat. One of the keys to this race, in my opinion, is whether the three Mashney girl can be effective sprinting. She has won sprinting at Saratoga, but that was a seven-eighths race washed off the turf back in 2020. Now, two starts back in the critical eye. She showed speed going a one-turn mile. She was no match for Make Mischief in Bankston. She sort of just ran okay. She had a nice, easy pace, I thought, on the lead that day. Last time out going a mile and a 16th against Open Foes, probably a little too far. The company a little bit too tough. I think of the speeds, she might have the most class of them. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see if she can cut all the way back to six and still have her speed, because if she does, I think she's really dangerous in here. She's got the figures uh, to be a player for sure. That critical eye you were talking about, both she and Secret Love were in there. You know, there's just no way to win a race like that. Make Mischief, who wound up winning that race, not only was it just a really good horse anyway, uh, with open company credentials, she ran a 99 buyer that day. I mean, Mashney Girl can't run a race that fast. There's just no way for her to win. Um, but her prior races are good. I, I feel like if she shows her speed in here, she's going to be really tough to run down. Kendra Carmouche up from Mark Henning. The four is Bank on Anna. Jose Lascano takes them out for Phil Serpe, who's sending out live horses this Saratoga meet. Last time out, she drew the rail at Saratoga going a first level on. She didn't break very well. And Jose decided to try to rush her up to get position. And she checked pretty badly at about the half mile pole. And I think after that, that cost her uh, a lot of chances. She has shown speed in the past. If she gets out of the gate, maybe she can be up close. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I would give her a little bit of a pass for the last one. I don't you know, think it's fair to say she was going to win regardless, but she did have some trouble early in that spot. And it was off of a little bit of a layoff. She's the only three-year-old in the field. She's got a lot of upside. Um, you know, she broke her maiden way back in January on a day where she just rode a gold rail down. She got to the, to the, to the early lead in there, rode a strong rail. So it was hard to evaluate the big buyer boost she got there, but she came right back and won her next start really impressively after a really bad stumble at the start. So, um, I do think she's pretty good. I think she's a player in here. Grudge was claimed two starts back by Eduardo Jones out of a $10,000 claiming victory in pace pressing fashion. They stepped her all the way up to 32 last time out and she just doesn't get out of the gate. That's kind of the issue with Grudge, a horse that does have some speed. She either stumbles, she either gets bounced around, and I don't think she can afford a stutter step beginning jumping into the stakes ranks. No, she can't, because if she's going to be effective in here, she's got to be up on the, uh, as part of the early pace in this race. I don't know if she can get there. Um, she did get bumped at the start last time against a better field, I suppose, but, man, she was bad in that race. I mean, she just showed absolutely nothing off the claim, and now they're stepping her up on class again. Eloquent Speaker has run some solid races in the past. She is stakes place. That was in the La Verdad in her first start of 2022. Since then, she's kind of been struggling to find her way. Tally Lynch is going to put blinkers on. And while this horse has shown tactical speed in the past, and maybe the blinkers are on just to try to get her close to the pace, maybe she can sit off and try to make one run if this pace gets a little hotter than expected. Yeah, I think she can do that. Um, the question is, what kind of price would you take on her, I guess, in this race, Dan? And then can she find a way to get back to those good races uh, over the winter at Akaruk? Because when Natalia Lynch claimed her and ran her right back on short rest, she you know, ran a big race to win with the 78. She came right back and missed in the, and just missed in the La Verdad. And then she was privately purchased by Gary Barber, who took her away from Natalia Lynch and gave her to some other trainers. He finally gave her back to Natalia Lynch last time. Um, it seems like it might have been a little too late, though, because she didn't really run that well. Chasing Cara, the seven, showed big speed, two starts back in an off-turf race over a very sloppy track. Just bursted to the front, cleared off to an uncontested lead, and kept on rolling. Now, her most recent start was over fast going. It was against open one other then that she couldn't get to the lead, and that was the end of her. I think that she is at her best when she goes to the front, and I think a rejuvenated Javier Castellano is on a send. Yeah, she's got to be on ascent here and just see if she can somehow clear this lead. I don't think it's impossible for her to do that. Um, even if she does, you know, I still don't really believe that she's good enough to wire this field. I know she ran a big figure two starts back, but overall, she's been around for a long time. She's had a lot of chances. It doesn't, it feels like that 84 buyer she got two backs a little bit of an outlier. Top pick time for the second of three New York Red Stakes races at the Spa on Friday, the Union Avenue. You're going to secret love for Johnny Velasquez and John Kimmel. Yeah, I just, I just feel like it's a great spot for her, Dan. She's a really nice fit in here. I do think there's going to be enough pace in front of her to give her her best chance to win. Same triple different order for us. You're going 2-4-3. I'm going 3-4-2. Mashney girl, I think the turnback's going to be okay for her. As you mentioned, she was in tough against Make Mischief two starts back. And then a mile and a 16th might actually just be a little bit too far for her. I think she's going to be right in the thick of things, if not out right in front at the 316th pole. Should be a fun race. This is one of the better betting races of the stakes. The Union Avenue Handicap on Friday at the Spa. Good luck. 